Hey folks, welcome back to another video and today I want to give you an idea or maybe yeah, an inspiration for how you can easily match the frequency content or balance your tonal balance or however you want to call it. Um, there are multiple ways you can do this already in Bitwig Studio. This is probably a new way and I haven't seen a tutorial about this. It's also not something you have to do all the time. It's just another tool you can use and maybe it's yeah fits your workflow better so this is what i do sometimes i have here a drum bass tune of mine it sounds like this right pretty basic just drum bass bass and lead sound nothing else and then i have here a reference tune this one here It's a different tune, it's a different vibe, but I kind of like the frequency balance, okay? So what you can do is you can first and foremost use the EQ+, plus. that's probably what you do already, but I show it here again. So you use the EQ+, plus on your tune. And you can see here the frequency spectrum, but you can also load in here reference. This is then here our second tune. And you can see, in purple basically here this reference tune so we can roughly compare it in my opinion that's good it's fine um, but I was searching for a different way of doing this maybe it's a better way I don't know so what I do then is I go to my reference tune and put the peak limiter on it and then I try to normalize it so I peak at 0 dB Probably minus 1.5. So now it's normalized. Then I go into an FX3 and I analyze what's going on in these boxes. But first I change here the crossover frequencies to the OTT crossover frequencies. Um, 0 0.5. I think it's a nice way of splitting the frequencies and most drum bass producers, dubstep producers, EDM producers use the OTT so they have the same splitting. So I guess it's probably the same for everyone. And I kind of like the way of splitting this here. Um, so now with this, this is zero dB, this is zero, this is all zero, all the zero. We can analyze what's going on in these boxes. In We use a peak limiter in each of these boxes here, zero dB. This is also 0 dB. So this is just the bass part, the low part, everything from 0 to 88 Hertz. And you can see it's not going up to 0 dB. Now we can measure this by just pulling this ceiling down until we have gain reduction here. So minus Minus uh, 3.5, okay? So that's the ceiling for the low part. We put this here also in the mid part. Maybe minus one. Maybe it's zero even. Yeah, something like this. Then the top part. Minus one. Oh, it's the same, sorry. Yeah, it's probably minus one here. Um, so we have here zero, we have here minus one and low part is minus uh, 3.5, okay? So we measured basically the, the content of each of these boxes. And all we have to do now is we put this on our track. So now first and foremost, we can check and compare, is there actually something different, right? So we can watch here the, 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 the low box. So you can see already here, it's pretty busy in our, our tunes. We can reduce the bass. So we can use here the input gain. 
which means this FX3 is more or less now an EQ, a rough EQ. Uh, if you don't want this, you can put an EQ5 or EQ plus in front and just reduce the frequencies here. It does the same thing, right? You can then use this more like a visualizer and you see, oh, I'm actually exceeding here my levels of my reference tune. But I'm just using here the input gain most of the times because I don't, you know, change the gain too much. Something like this, then mid. I had or top end. Right, and then a peak limit at the end, so. Oh, it's actually, okay. So the good thing about this is you can learn what's going on in these boxes in each of these uh, frequency ranges, you, because you can see it pretty clearly. You can also then uh, copy this over from your reference tune to your tune and use it as a guide. And you can see, clearly see when you exceed these uh, levels here with the gain reduction. So it's very obvious. Um, it also helps you when you use an EQ in front or some processing and you maybe push some frequencies too hard. Um, the limiter counters that. And at the end of your uh, chain, you can then see, oh, the mid part is actually pretty busy. can see a gain reduction of minus 6 dB. So you can see instantaneously something is um, more or less wrong in my chain before in front of this FX3. And then you can counter or maybe take some uh, measures for that. I don't know. So it's more obvious basically that something is exceeding your levels or the levels of your reference tune and you can match it more easily instead of just having an EQ plus here and see some lines going up and down. It's not that clear, um, in my opinion. Uh, so now that we have this here, we can also replace or combine the peak limiter in front with the compressor, right? You can say, I don't like, I don't like the nature of the peak limiter because there's no attack and there's also no ratio. It's just a, a limiter. So we can say ratio all the way up and attack all the way down. So this is basically now a limiter here. And then say minus one, this is then the threshold minus one. And we have input gain of basically nothing. So you can compress this here in front. Maybe leave a bit of wiggle room here with attack. Maybe go down with the ratio. I don't know. It depends on your on your on your tune. And then have the ceiling here at the end in place. That always gives you kind of security. And then you can push or pull the gain here until you have the right kind of busyness of the peak limiter. You can also combine this at the end here, maybe with an over clipper, and then put in front of that a tool and push everything, the full band, basically into this thing here and make everything a bit more busy and, you know, maybe it gives you the sound you're looking for. Um, all kinds of ways you can use this and that's how I use it, at least. Um, so you can combine it or you can also replace the peak limiter and just go with over alone or only a compressor. That's it. Uh, it doesn't matter, actually. I'm only using here the peak limiter so you can see uh, what's going on. So this is basically the frequency spectrum. So it roughly matches more or less the frequency balance, but the loudness is different. Um, you can then use a limiter here. I'm using my uh, clipper preset. Mm -hmm. 
this is one way of doing it. Then we can also do something like on the reference tune, we use a mid side split. Okay. And in here, in the mid part, we also use a peak limiter. Um, and we just measure the same thing. So minus 1.6 here, 1.5 side. Minus 3.5, okay. And then we put this here again on our tune at some point, maybe in the beginning or here. So you can see the mid is way too busy. Pull this down. Side, nothing happens, so we can increase this. At least we have content in the side, so it's not like you can make the mix wide if you have a mono mix, right? You need to have at least some reverbs at some point or maybe differences between the left and the right. Uh, but here you can roughly um, decide how wide you want to have your tune. And this helps you match it with your uh, reference tune because the reference tune sometimes is super wide and your tune is super, you know, mono kind of uh, narrow and it doesn't match. And here you can also match this. So frequency spectrum is matched and the wideness and maybe the loudness also in a way. Um, Another thing you can do is you can put a mid side split here on the reference tune, put tool devices in there. Um, then go to your tune. Also again, mid side split. And then use in here an EQ plus. And then use as a reference AB uh, mid side, side tool out, right? You can see here in purple the spectrum of the side channel of your reference tune or the mid channel if you want to then, right? So you can reference then here only the side channel from your tune. So you can, yeah, mix and match basically everything. Or you can maybe cut out here some, some low end, increase this here, something like this. So this is something I do sometimes. Um, like I said in the beginning, it's maybe not the best way of doing this, but you only need native tools for this. FX3, peak limiter, compressor, and so on. Very basic. And um, it works pretty well, in my opinion. You don't need to use Ozone or something like this. Very expensive and very CPU intensive. And you also learn something because you can see what's going on in these boxes or in these frequency ranges. Uh, it's very straightforward. You just need a few devices here and can co combine it. Maybe you don't need to use everything I showed you, just some of the things. Um, so everything is possible. So this is um, something I want to show you. Maybe you do this already. I have no idea. Let me know what you think. Maybe it's a stupid idea. I think it works kind of great. Um, you can also replace here the FX3 with something like um, frequency split or you use my X split presets, which are then, um, uh, yeah, don't give you here the face issues. For me, FX3 is completely fine. I have no problem, problem to use this here on the master. Um, it's pretty great. You can also use this for uh, buses. So you can also compare, let's say, not only the full mix, Sometimes you have in the beginning, in the intro of the drum bass tunes, you have the kick and the snare uh, singled out. And you can compare then how the drums sound in your reference tune and compare it with your drum bus. And then you compare also the 
full mix with your full mix um, so you can really match this um, and it's also not super precise so it's not like you match every single frequency to your tune to your reference tune it's more like rough right because we have only three um, three bands and this is completely fine you don't want to have you know this precise match you just want to match it roughly so you're on the the same ballpark you have the same top end the same mids the same lows uh, because with drum bass and all the other dance floor tunes it's pretty important when you mix a tune right you have a pretty nicely mixed tune and then your tune comes in and you know nothing is there there's no bass there there's no mids there and where, where are the hi-hats everything is you know <laughs> you lose basically in the mix then and with this you can check um your tune against a reference tune so everything is really there frequency wise uh, yeah that's it and maybe you can also just use this as a analyzing tool like i said before put an eq in front right then you eq everything and then you just check here with the peak limiter if it's busy or not busy and when you're good you can then just delete this at the end of your mix down so you can use it as a helper maybe it's it's a more clearly visual helper for frequency balance so yeah that's it uh, leave a like leave a comment let me know what you think thanks for watching see you in the next video bye